How's it going guys? It's your boy Round Tall Guy. Welcome back to the garage. We got the blue XJ in here and today I'm trying to figure out where is this clunking noise coming from. Basically I noticed when I turn either left or right slowly there's this clunking noise coming from this area right here. And I'm not sure if it's my gearbox or if it's the U-joint on the, on the uh, steering shaft. So I'm gonna try to figure out what is the noise. Obviously the gearbox is really expensive. So I don't want to replace that if it's if if the noise is not coming from there. I did check the uh, spacers for the gearbox, and is it and it's pretty damn good. Um, there's no cracks or anything. There's no play with the gearbox itself. So I doubt it's the uh, spacer that failed on me. And before I start this, I'm just gonna change my shocks in the front. If you notice over here, I went ahead and I painted the uh, spring and I kind of got overspray a little on the body and the bottom here, but I really don't care. Um, I just wanted to protect the spring because it was really rusty and it just made the car look bad. I mean, for far distance, you can see the springs from here. You can tell the spring is nice and clean and the shock is ugly. All right, so I'm just gonna change the shocks in the front just because I already changed the shocks in the back and I'd rather have brand new shocks all around. So when they all go bad, they all go bad around the same time. Um, so I got brand new shocks right here. Once again, rough country. You can't really beat them for the price. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that. So let's get started, I guess. All right, so I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit and then just spray it down and then we can go ahead and install the new shock. Right, and this one's the exact same process, two bolts at the bottom, uh, one nut at the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just remove it. Production. All right, and we got new hardware. This is grade eight steel, so it's supposed to be more durable and last a bit longer than the uh, factory ones. All right, so I got the bottom hardware in. I'm just gonna tighten up a little bit, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the um, the little string so I can have this extend up so I can put the nut on top. All right, this side is all set. New hardware at the bottom, new hardware at the top, new bushings, looks pretty damn good. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the other side real quick. I don't want the video to be too, too long. Uh, I still need to do the uh, drive shaft stuff, so let's get a move on here. All right, this one I already cleaned it. I put rust reformer and I'm gonna go ahead and install the new shock.
All right, guys, so we're gonna start working on the gearbox in the uh, steering shaft. Now, I couldn't get the car to make that clunging noise when I turn. Uh, this only happens on some days. And the weird part is that when, like the certain days where when it does make the noise, it makes it every time I turn. Now, the, as I mentioned, the noise is coming from here. So it could either be my U-joint or it could be the gearbox itself. Now, I did also notice that there have been some days when I hit a pothole, the steering, uh, the steering wheel stay turned one direction. And then when I hear a, 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 a clunging noise, it goes back to normal and it's straight. So I'm guessing the gears in the gearbox are actually bad. And for some reason, it's, it's like skipping a gear or like, it's skipping like a teeth on the gear, basically. What I'm gonna do, just because gearbox are expensive, I'm gonna remove the, um, the, the steering shaft and I'm just gonna play around with the U-joint and see if there's any weird play, any weird noise of it. If it's fine, then that means it's definitely the gearbox and I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. But if it's just the steering shaft, then I have a replacement I can use. Let me go over here. So this is the uh, new gearbox. Um, this is just in case if I need it. If not, he's returning my money back. Um, but here is a use. Over here, I have a used uh, steering shaft, and this U joint in this side is pretty good. It looks banged up, but there's no weird play, and it works. Uh, same thing with the other side. So I'm gonna just disconnect the steering shaft and and see if that's the issue. If not, then we can start removing the gearbox, which is gonna be a pain, but uh, it's worth it because I don't want the uh, I don't want to lose my steering or lose my alignment just because the gearbox decided to skip teeth on the gear. All right guys, we managed to get the uh, steering shaft out and the U-joint on this one, it seems pretty good. So I'm believing the issue is with the gearbox itself. So at this point, we're just gonna go ahead and just change out the gearbox. We need to take off the um, high pressure and low pressure uh, hose and then we can start unbolting it from the car. Alright, I went ahead and I drained the uh, power steering fluid and we also went ahead and removed the bolt or the nut for the uh, pinman arm. Now hopefully we can get this uh, pinman arm to drop. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and just remove the, uh, the hose. I believe that's like a 13 wrench. All right, so we ran to an issue. We don't have enough leverage to remove uh, this hose here. So we're just gonna take it off from here and just disconnect the rubber hose. And once the uh, gearbox is on the floor, then I'll worry about removing this. And then also down here, we're having issues removing the bolts that holds the gearbox in place just because we, we're not getting enough um, of a bite from the bolt head. So we got the gearbox out. We managed to take out the reservoir as well. Just to make it easier just cause these uh, nuts are hard to remove inside the engine bay. And the bolts, we got it out. We need to use an air hammer to remove the, uh, the crush up washer that was preventing us from getting a good bite. Uh, so now we're just gonna go ahead and just migrate the, oh, we're just gonna go ahead and just disconnect the hoses here. And then we can start looking at the new gearbox and see how we're gonna fit everything back together. Of course, I got new hardware for the gearbox as well, so it should be an easy um, job putting it back together. All right, so it looks like we can't save the um, 
the metal hoses. So we're just gonna separate it from the reservoir and we're just gonna order some new hoses. There's iron, right? No, there. Oh, is it steel? I'm gonna spray it down and just go for it. No. Oh, wait, turning or is it rounding? I think it's rounding. Are we gonna get a new line? Yeah, but I need to separate it. Fine, it's cut it. Yeah, I was gonna say, let's just fucking cut it. All right, so we got the old gearbox out. <laughs> all right, so we got the old gearbox here. We couldn't save the hoses at all because they were really tight. We ended up bending one, so and this one just didn't want to come off. So we cut it and we got it out. So this is just a core. We have to return this. We got our money back. Uh, and this is the new one right here. It's a refurbished one. It should serve a per. It should serve exactly what we need. I'm gonna have to get two new hoses for this, which is not a problem. At least all this is brand new. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on in the car and go from there, I guess. All right, and then before we install this, we got a new spacer, more a heavy duty one. And we got some new hardware. And then as for the pinman arm, we're just gonna reuse the pinman arm. It doesn't look too, too bad. Eh, kinda ugly though. But, Let's see how that works. All right, I guess we're gonna get started. All right, we're gonna see if we can sandwich everything together. That's why we got my buddy here, so we can get uh, this done in one shot. Uh, where is the gear? Spacer, oh, here it is. Yeah. All right, seeing any of the bolts, either on this, this top one right here? No, okay. Put them, oh, yeah. uh, the washer. Yo, I want to get a canoe so bad. A canoe? Yeah, I just want to go canoeing. Yeah. It's got the okay, yeah. top one? Yeah. Uh, get the washer with it. Actually, well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. He says this is heavy. Okay. Get the. There you go. Yeah. Let go? Huh? Yeah, let go? No. Hold it. Two days later. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put the arm back in and we should be done down here and we can go ahead and torque everything after. Oh, this is pretty heavy actually. Is this it? I think so, is it rusty? It is. Probably. No, it's not. Oh, it's not? Is it rusty? Yeah, it's not. <laughs> Yep. And then just hope for the best. Crank it. What can you get oh, me? Oh, it's a rough country arm. Oh, that's why it's so shit. I <laughs> forgot. Yeah, it's a rough. <laughs> yeah, it says rough country on top. Yeah, it's probably a drop arm. That's why. Yeah. What do you need? Uh, the nut and the washer. Right there. All right guys, quick update. We got the gearbox back in. We went ahead and connected the steering uh, shaft. And if you take a look, we got new hardware on the bottom over here. Basically, we torque them down to 70 foot pounds. And we got the uh, pin mitt arm back in as well. 
and we tighten that down to 180 foot pounds or 170 foot pounds i believe odd uh, now basically i couldn't save the uh hoses for from the old gearbox so i'm ordering a new high pressure hose um, because O'Reilly's Advanced Arter Parts, um, Artizone didn't have it. So I went to Napa and they ordered, they ordered the high pressure line for me should come tomorrow. Um, in the meantime, the low pressure line, all it is is just this nipple here um, and a rubber hose. So that part is easy, anyone has that. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that the over is seated correctly. I can go ahead and screw this in. So at this point, I'm just waiting for that part to come in so I can put them back together um, and I can drive the damn car. So I guess we'll wait until the uh, high pressure line comes in. All right, another thing is I was trying to replace the hose on the reservoir and I managed to snap this. And this is a common thing, but the only downside is now I can't replace this because you can't really find these new online and eBay would be charging you like $200 or $100 for one of these. Um, Cause apparently these are hard to find for the two, uh, 2.5 liter. So I went ahead and I got this replacement one. Obviously obviously this is not the same size, but the uh, ends here is similar. So that's the reason why I got it. Um, also another YouTuber used the same one to replace this. So I'm just gonna use this. I'm gonna find a way to uh, mount it onto the engine bay. And I and the, that all this stupid thing is I need to order a cap for this because apparently they don't send you a cap. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and install this, and then I'm gonna see how I can uh, fit everything back together because honestly this project, <laughs> this repair is taking longer than usual just because of the stupid hoses I need to get. All right, and these hoses came with the O-ring, so I'm just gonna go ahead and lubricate the O-ring and place it on there just so I can make these last a bit longer. I'm just gonna put, get some power steering, put it in a little container here. I'm basically soaking the O-rings in the uh, power steering fluid, just so it can stay lubricated so it doesn't crack over time. All right, with the two O-rings installed, we can go ahead and install this to the pump and the gearbox. All right guys, I managed to put the high pressure hose back or the high pressure line back. Uh, basically, I went ahead and I first put this one at the bottom at the gearbox and then this one at the pump. I needed to uh, kind of bend it or kind of twist it away from the fuel hose here. And just so I can also have room to put the sensor. And so far it looks like it fit perfectly. Hopefully the O-rings are sitting correctly. I didn't want to uh, tighten it too, too much because I can end up damage the O-ring. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and find a way to put the low pressure line in. All right guys, quick update. So this is the reservoir. I managed to put the hoses on and I'm gonna show you what type of rig I'm doing with this for the meantime until I get the proper parts. Uh, let me show you real quick. All right, so there's two low pressure lines that needs to be connected. So this is the reservoir right here. We got two of them, there's two different sizes. Now the original um, reservoir connected right here. And if you see, there's a tight fit to connect the hoses. So I decided I'm gonna move the, the tank over here. Something like this right here. And it looks professional and it looks durable. I had to find a way to mount it here. Maybe I, I was thinking of just drilling and getting like a bolt in the nut to hold this. Or put zip ties for the meantime and run, of course, run the hoses to the correct location. And that should suffice for now. Even if I, if I decide to keep this as a permanent thing, it's gonna look nice and it's easy to get to. And there's nothing really happening over here since there's no air box. So this should be a nice fit right here. In case you guys are wondering where I got this tank, I'll put a link in the description below. 
and I'll put the uh, link to the cap below as well since it's hard to get both of them. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna connect them now and see what happens. All right guys, quick update. So I managed to connect both of the hoses and it looks like it fit perfectly. And I made sure that it's not gonna rub against the steering shaft here. Um, I managed to put the reservoir right here for the meantime with zip ties just because it's getting late and I, I don't want to start any drilling right now and wake up all the neighbors. So I'm just, I, I just went ahead and put zip ties for now. They this is honestly ain't going nowhere. You see? So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up. I'm gonna go ahead and bleed the system and hopefully that um that clunking noise disappears. If it's still there, then it has to be the steering shaft and I'll go ahead and replace it since, since I got a used one over there on the bench. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the setup. Of course, I want this to be more permanent, more professional. And of course, I got the sensor connected over there. So we're just gonna go ahead and fill it up and we're gonna check for leaks. So I managed to put everything back together. I managed to bleed the air from the power steering pump. But for some reason, the steering pump started winding a lot. And I, no matter how many times I turned the wheel left and right, uh, no, no matter how many times I let the uh, fluid sit so all the bubbles can come out, um, the power steering kept sque kept squeaking and making that grinding noise. So I was guessing I have a bad power steering pump as well. So I went ahead and I took it off and it got me the idea, since I'm gonna get a new power steering pump, why not get the one for the 4.0, the one that comes with the reservoir? Basically having these two together saved me a lot of money because uh, buying this separate, buying this separate, it's gonna cost way more. So I got them together. So basically for this, all we need to do is migrate the, um, the pulley to this one. Now, unfortunately this one has a crack in here, but it doesn't affect the, um, it doesn't affect where the belt sits. So I'm just gonna use it. If it fails, then I'll take it out again and redo it. Um, so yeah, that's basically where I am right now. All right guys, I got the power steering pump connected and I got the reservoir, of course, with the pump. Uh, I managed to run the line from here, the low the uh, low pressure line from here, from the reservoir down to uh, the gearbox. And I managed to bend the, um, the high pressure line into place. And if you look at it, it looks like it's rubbing. Reality is not, there's a little gap there and the hose goes down there and it's away from the steering shaft and it connects to the gearbox. So this is honestly the best thing I can do um, since the reservoir broke, the original reservoir broke. Um, basically here is the old one right here. Uh, the old one's right here. All right, as I mentioned, this cost about 150 on eBay, a used one. There's literally no point of buying that because with 150, you can get yourself a new pump and the reservoir with it. Uh, so honestly, if you ever break the reservoir for the 2.5 liter engine, don't bother searching for one. Just get yourself one of these. Um, of course, it doesn't come with the cap. I don't know why people like spot selling stuff separate, but the um, I managed to remove the original one and plug it in to the new one. So basically we should be all set now. The only, the only issue with this is that the sensor that, that tells you if you're low on power steering, basically it's short, if you see over here. I don't wanna force it, you know, I don't wanna stretch or force it, I can end up snapping the cable. Uh, but this is, this literally is not the pro, um, this this is literally not a big issue. I can just um, run a longer wire to it and it should be fine. So basically I should be all set with the setup. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna jack up the front of the car and I'm just gonna rotate my tires left and right multiple times to get all the air pockets out, all the air bubbles out. Um, and hopefully once I start it and I drive it around, there's gonna be no whining noise from the pump itself. The pulley of, of course is the original one. Hopefully it doesn't give me any squeaking noise um, because it's, it's really annoying getting this whole unit out and putting it back in. But that's basically it guys. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna bleed out the air 
and then start it up. Hopefully, it runs perfectly fine. Alright guys, and I am done. I went ahead and took the Jeep to the gas station. I drove around. I did some sharp turns. There is a small clunking noise still coming from this side right here. So the next step is I'm gonna go ahead and just replace the steering shaft just because I have it, as I mentioned multiple times throughout the video. Uh, I'm gonna replace that and I might want to replace the pivot arm just because I kind of want to replace it just to have brand new everything. Uh, also, because if the pinman arm is bad, then it can ruin the splines on my gearbox, which the gearbox is already expensive enough. So those are the two components I'm gonna replace next. So basically, my front, my whole front end is basically brand new, besides the tie rod, which is fine. Uh, it's fine. Hopefully, there's no other big major repairs I need to do to this Jeep, just because I want to enjoy it for the summer. I don't want to be in the garage all week repairing, um, using the little time I have to repair the cars. And of course, making videos and stuff like that. I want to get more outside, not just, you know, garage videos. Um, so I'm going to end the video here, guys. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you got comments, let me know. Also, any products I use in this video, I'll go ahead and put it down in the description below for you guys to look it up. All right, guys, stay safe. Bye-bye.